Now, no doubt Nigeria's oil sector has had its fair share of ups and downs in recent times, ranging from the recently uh, suspended strike embarked upon by members of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pangasin, over the implementation of the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, IPIS, and the latest increase in the pump price of petrol, which, of course, is still generating several reactions. But let's put all of these into perspective with the president of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pangasin, Mr. Festus Osifo, who's right here with us in the studio. Good morning, Mr. Osifo. Thank you for making out time to be with us today. Good morning, BC. It's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, Nigerians. All right. I'd like to get your reaction, first of all, to what uh, the Minister of State just said, you know, talking about uh, 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 what the reason behind the increase in the pump price of petrol. How does his explanations sit with you? Uh, yes, um, for us in Pengasan, what we have attributed to over the years is that um, uh, if you want to do deregulation, let the deregulation be not be import dependent deregulation. Let the, dereg the deregulation be uh, based on local production and local capacity to produce. So uh, what we have today is an import uh, dependent deregulation. But clearly, uh, it is not even a deregulation as it is today. Because uh, when you deregulate a market, what that means is that uh, people could, a lot of players will come into that space. But what we have today, a lot of the major marketers, they are not importing uh, PMS. The reason they are not importing PMS is practically because of the fact that the, 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 the field is not level. The, the environment is not conducive for them. Because if you look at it, um, uh, PPMC, for example, they get uh, USD from uh, government at a particular rate. So if other companies, other major marketers, if they go in, at the end of the day, they don't get um, uh, the um, USD at that given rate. And once they don't get it, let's assume that a particular player is getting USD, let's assume, at about 350 Naira per dollar. Then another one is getting at about 380, for example, or 390. You see the disparity. Mm. So because of that, most of these other companies, they are not interested in importing fuel. So when you deregulate, what that means is that you remove your hand totally and you allow market forces to determine the, um, uh, the price. So it's, it will basically demand and supply. But the way it is today, mm. it is still a bit controlled. So what we actually want is if you want to deregulate, deregulate fully, but you must improve your local refining capacity. And that is why in Pengasan, uh, we have driven to the point that uh, the Potaka refinery that they, are, that they are about to revitalize, that is why we pushed that in Pengasan and the end of even our sister trade union, Nupeng, will be represented in the steering committee as well as the validation committee. The steering committee is the highest level committee that we see to the workability of Potaka refineries. Yes, from what we've seen, we are a bit satisfied with some of the programs and some of the timelines that have been developed in order to rehabilitate Potaka refinery. It is not actually turnaround maintenance. Turnaround maintenance is something that you do every now and then, in, uh, say every two, two years. But these refineries have been neglected for a very, very long time. So what they need today is a total rehabilitation. And, we are and, and they are starting from Potaka Refinery. And on our part, as trade union, we are going to follow them up to ensure that they keep to those timelines. All right, now we'll touch more about the refineries in just a moment, but I just want to take you back to the issue of uh, the, the regulation now with all that is happening with the state of economy. Many are asking if this is actually the best time to do this, looking at the impact on the purchasing power of Nigerians. Uh, yes, uh, we understand, like, I mean, I've had this argument here before at the time that uh, today, uh, looking at the global pandemic, uh, today, looking at the fact that a lot of people, they have lost their real income, looking at even the inflation, as of yesterday, the inflation figure was released and it was about 14.23%. Mm -hmm. So, uh, year on year. So, basically, it shows that there are some fundamentals and some indices in the economy that is not just right. Uh, but, again, looking at it from the larger sphere, you realize that, uh, you know, in 2012, there was also a, um, attempted deregulation by the good luck um, regime. It was 
it was resisted. They organized labor, the TUC, then NLC, they came out vehemently to resist it. And we also told them, between that 2012 and where we are today in, uh, in 2020, if the government, if they were serious, today they could have, I mean, we could have been self-sufficient in production of, um, in production of uh, PMS. You see, one thing we should realize as well is that if you import crude oil, or rather, if you export crude oil and you import PMS, that PMS that you are importing is dollar-based. Okay. So what that means eventually is that as you are bringing in the crude oil, uh, sorry, the PMS, you are importing jobs. Or rather, you are, uh, a lot of our jobs, we are going to have issues with them. Because if you bring in crude oil, um, PMS at the end of the day, most jobs that we have in Nigeria, you because the families are not working, then we are going to have issues with the job. So now, basically for us, what we've advocated over the years is that you must improve the local refining capacity. But again, today, today, I think as well that if government wants to deregulate, if they deregulate fully, I believe even the price will come down because more players will come in. So the operating environment should be should be a bit level for all players so that the major marketers, the independent marketers, they will be able to import PMS. Why putting modalities in place to ensure that the local refining capacity is enhanced? Uh, because like what I was trying to explain a while ago, mm -hmm. that um, the, the PMS refine abroad, the people that work there, you are paying them in dollars. But if you are producing it in Nigeria, you are paying them in Naira. So if you devalue your currency, the dollar component is going to be the same, but the naira component is going to reduce. So at the end of the day, you are using cheaper workforce to produce the same quantity of PMS, unlike when you import this PMS. So for us, we are pushing government so hard for us to improve our local refining capacity. So, to, yeah. Okay, so I was just going to ask yeah. now that you're pushing so hard here. So, mm. what, how would you, what's your assessment of the body language of the government towards reviving these refineries? Of course, uh, the minister also pointed that the staff are still there, they're getting paid. So, what does this tell you? Uh, yes, like what we've advocated in the past is that uh, the staff are still there, but you, you are not giving them the tools to work. So if you don't give them the tools to work, if you don't create the right environment for them to work, because it is the management normally that should provide that environment and provide a tool for the employees to work. Today, this is channels. We have cameras everywhere. If these cameras are not here, and if the environment is not conducive, we will not be here today discussing. So the government and the management should provide the employees the tools to work. So when that is done, I believe clearly that our members, they will be able to deliver. We have people of a very high level of capacity and intellect working in these refineries. They are there today. The refineries are not working to no fault of theirs. Uh, because if you are supposed to be maintaining refineries once every two years, for example, you carry a turnaround maintenance. In this turnaround maintenance, there are budgets for them. I mean, you are supposed to budget for it. You mm -hmm. plan for it. So if the management is not coming forth with such plan, the employees had little or nothing to do. So what we've advocated is that the three refineries, or plus the other one in Porta called making four, yeah. we should put plans in place to ensure that they, they will come to life. But what we are seeing in Porta called refinery and the traction that has been made, we are a bit okay. But let that be replicated in Wari refinery and in Kaduna refinery, because we have the requisite map power to deliver on that. Now, your association has constantly called for the adoption of the NLNG model yes. in uh, operating the refineries, where the federal government has a share, but to have the likes of Shell and Chevron actually operating. Right. So, uh, how would this help our uh, over reliance, you know, in the importation of petroleum products? Uh, yes, um, the plan today is that uh, first of all, let us rehabilitate the refineries. Once we rehabilitate the refineries and they are working very well, then the refinery can, we cannot bring in different model. And what we've advocated is the NLNG model because today NLNG is a flagship. It is working because it is a private um, and public partnership. So we must develop that for our refineries. When we do that, you know, in Nigeria today, we are having issues for our government running business. Uh, these refineries are not working basically today because it is run by government. 
The same refineries that are built in other parts of the world, there are refineries in, in France, there are refineries in other parts of the world that were built the same year with the Portacol refinery. I can tell you that they are working 247. So for us, what we advocate is that after rehabilitating these refineries, we will bring in the private sector. So let there be, it could be 59, uh, uh, 51, 49 to the private or to government, depending on how the arrangement will be. Because if, if, it, if the private people that, have, that are running refineries all over the world, if we allow them to run these refineries, we strongly believe that we will not find ourselves in this sorry state again. All right, now let's uh, shift gear to uh, your recently suspended strike action. That's uh, by your members, uh, Bengison members, talking about the IP's uh, uh, system now. So now the strike has been suspended. Does that mean that the federal government has actually acceded to all of your demands? Uh, yes. Um, um, some of the issues that we had then was that 22-month uh, um, arrears, uh, salary shortfalls to one of our branch, uh, NNRE, that has been owed for a very long time, it wasn't paid. As at, as at last week, they've released about 50% of that money to our members, and the other 50%, there are plans that before the end of November, they should be able to get the other 50%. So that is for the 22 months arrears. Then for PPPROA, uh, everything is sorted. The monthly salaries they've all received, so they are all fine in PPPROA. Then in PTI as well, uh, it's also Okay, so I could say that by and large, we got about 80% of what we asked for, while the other 20%, we are still discussing that. So, uh, relatively, it, it came out positive. But what we want to encourage government is that let us not wait for us to go on strike before issues are being addressed. Some of these issues, they've been there since 2014. Some of them, they've been there since 2018. So, we want to advocate the part of dialogue that Pengasan always stood for over the years that when there are issues, because we keep, we attempt to engage, we reach out to them, uh, but we want to encourage them that they should take those reach out as seriously as possible. Mm. They shouldn't wait for us to, to down tools before they will come and listen or accede to some of our demands. So that is our encouragement. But in general, I think it was fine. I think our members are relatively happy. The few other issues remaining, we are trying to address them behind the scene. All right. As we prepare to round up this conversation now, once again, what should the federal government actually do to ease the burden on the people? And, and this is me referring to issues like the increase in the price of petrol once again. How can the government help to actually cushion the effects of this on, on, on the people? Uh, yes. Uh, in every developed economy, there are some forms of subsidy. In every developed economy, there are things the government always do to ease the burden on people. I had the last time the president uh, gave an address, making an illustration of Saudi Arabia, for example. In Saudi Arabia, you you realize that their per capita income hits it's almost times 50 of Nigerian per capita income. In Saudi Arabia, for example, you realize that they have good infrastructures, they have a lot of things going for them. They have subsidies in lots of other areas. So we shouldn't just look at one aspect and pick it out. So for me, I think that government should be responsive to the people. I think that government should bring about some level of palliatives to the people. And I also think as well that we should not allow the, the, the forces of demand supply, the variation in our USD. Because if today, if there's a devaluation in Naira, and it goes down to about 500 Naira officially, without the crude oil price going up, we are going to see increment in the price of crude oil because we are exporting, sorry, increment in the price of PMS because we are actually exporting, um, uh, we are importing this crude oil, uh, sorry, this, this PMS as well. So that is the fundamental problem. Mm. would like to thank you, President of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengerson, Mr. Festival Osifo. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.